Welcome to Tech Notice. What's this camera in front of me? And what's this thing attached to the camera with these two antennas on? Now, this is some very interesting piece of technology. See, this is my smartphone over here. And as you can see, it's sending video wirelessly to my phone. And do you know what the coolest thing is? You can actually connect up to three devices to this thing. So three people can see this camera footage from their phones, tablets, wirelessly. How cool is that? Okay, let's go more in detail about what this thing is. So basically, this is a wireless video transmitter device. So basically, you're gonna have this little box over here that has these two antennas, and then it's gonna send a video wirelessly, and then you can connect it off your phone or tablets or iPads. As long as you have Android or iOS and you can download the app of the Cinei, Axoon Cinei, that's what this thing is called. You can connect up to three people up to it, onto it, and then you can see the footage coming from the camera. Now, the coolest thing is you don't actually have to use the camera's HDMI port to actually connect to it. What I have done usually in these cases is that I'm already have like a monitor on the camera, so I don't have two ports on the DSLR or mirrorless camera that I have. So what I do is some of the monitors that I have have an HDMI out. So what I do is I'll take this little cable and then I plug it onto the HDMI out so I can actually get the monitor, but then also have the monitor on my phone. So basically, this is something very, very exciting and I'm just super impressed by what this thing can do, especially at the price point of $200. Uh, it's just mind blowing. You can have a big iPad on it, so get much bigger screen and then you can see your focus and things like that, which is really cool. So in the box, uh, it comes with, you know, a few cables and things like that. At the moment, I am using over here a micro HDMI to HDMI. So this box itself, it actually has an HDMI port over here there's a power button on the side over here, and then a USB-C port on that side for charging. So that's the IO of the actual little device over here or the transmitter. Also, there is a quarter inch screw on the bottom of the device over there, so you can mount it to something. In terms of using the device, the cool thing is that this device can be used about three and a half to four hours if one person is connected to the network. If there's more people, obviously the battery, battery drowns faster, but the cool thing is that it can be charged while in use. So if you have a power bank or USB port somewhere, you can actually charge this device up by the USB-C port on the side over here and then get miles longer monitoring. I had a shoot where um, I had like a camera in front of the room and, and it was side away and kind of facing the audience where I couldn't really man it over there. So what I did was I put one of these over there and it was like an eight hour day. It was just standing there recording all day long. So I had like this monitor on my phone, I put a power bank on the side, mounted it onto the uh, tripod, and then it was powering the device all day so I could just monitor it on my phone all day basically because I was manning another camera in the back of the room, which was very, very helpful. And I'm sure you can find much more creative uses of using this and, you know, kind of finding use for it. Apparently the operating range of this is up to 100 meters of unobstructed use. So whatever that means, depending, you know, sometimes it transfers or if you have stuff on the way, the range is less, things like that. Now let's go on to the app. So if you look at the app, you can see that there's quite a few things going on over here. And if you go back for a second, then when you create it with the actual app over here, you can see that there's just this gimbal thing over there. So you're gonna have to slide right. And then there's this gray button over here, no text on it. You're gonna have to click on that, go monitor over there, and then you, you're actually inside the app. So connecting to the device is super, super simple. All you're gonna have to do is turn this device on as, and as long as this A kind of logo over here is lit up, uh, you're gonna have the Wi-Fi network, go on your phone, connect to the Wi-Fi network, and then go to the app, and then you're connected. As you can see over here, I am connected. Woo, it is all live. On the bottom of this screen, you can actually get quite a lot of exposure or kind of assist features of the monitors. You can get, have the waveforms, you can have, um, you know, obviously different RGB waveforms and things like that. You can have the gray scale if, if you want to have gray RGB. There's red, blue, green, you can have that. Focus peaking, 
if you'd like focus peaking like that over here you know adjust the level of the focus peaking uh, red green blue white change the color of the focus peaking false color which is very helpful over here as you can see but in my case i can see straight away something that is really annoying about all false colors recently there is a lot of companies that add false color to monitors and cameras and things like that but the biggest problem with that is that there is no ire numbers attached to the side of the colors on the side over here as you can see which means that the information for me is completely useless okay i can see that the red is completely clipping but i'm gonna have to guess which one is 80 or 90 or 70 percent and also if you're shooting different uh, log styles for example s log 3 or s log 2 or cinev 4 if you're shooting sony if you're shooting other cameras it's obviously a little bit different but all these different profiles they clip at different points so for example if i want to know that my s log 3 is not clipping i know it clips around 94 95 ire then this is absolutely useless for me because I don't know which one is 95. If the numbers were attached to it, I would know that, okay, this color is actually clipped and I don't have any information on the video codec for this clip. So we've got histogram over here. Unfortunately, you can't move them around on the screen. You've got zebras, exposure levels, you know, the cool thing is that the zebras can go all the way from zero to 100. Not very many devices or actual companies offer you the um, thing that you can use the zebras from so low level. Usually the zebras start around 60%, but in here you can actually go all the way to zero and then to 100%. Next up, we have LUT. Now, at first, this is very confusing. How you can adjust it is if you tap on it twice, and then suddenly these things come on with two Chinese, I'm guessing, Mandarin, uh, buttons or text on the bottom. No idea what they do. But I figured out that on the right over there, that means cancel. So if you press that, it just goes away. If you go back to LUT, when you press on the left one, that is browse from your device. So when you change that, now it's going to go to like recents or downloads folder. So you can actually have your own LUTs built into the screen and then you can turn them on. So at the moment, just for the sake of it, let's turn on, um, you know, Canon Log 2, boom. This would be, you know, the Canon Log 2 kind of corrected. Obviously, I'm not shooting in Canon Log, so it looks a little bit odd over here. And then to switch it on and off is very simple, just tapping LUT on and off. Once the LUT is selected, just tapping the LUT it actually switches it off over there. Now, when you press to, press to more, there's a little bit more things that you can do with this. There's center markers on and off, safe marker if you want to have, you know, safety ratio marker, so you can, you know, kind of blend it out. Uh, if you're shooting an amorphic or two, three, five point one, whatever you're shooting, marking color, you can have it red or green or blue, whatever. You can have the marker width also adjust the width, which is very cool. You can zoom in your footage a little bit if you want to, which is very perfect. You can also add anamorphic, so depending which anamorphic you're shooting, one point three three or two times anamorphic, you can have this app actually show you the final image so they squeeze the footage color range video range or full range not sure what that means color range anyway there's the options so now you know the features and it's very very promising and it gives you quite a lot of things that you can do and assist and kind of gives you like this very interesting point of view from monitoring your footage and not just you but maybe your film crew now let's talk some of the bad sides that you probably have to know before buying this product by the way if you're enjoying this video hit that like button it actually makes a difference if we're new here and we're meeting for the first time welcome this is tech notice i'm lowry videos like these are coming out every single week so consider subscribing okay let's continue one last thing that i would like to mention is that if you'd like to pick one of these up the link for this is in the description if you want to check out some other details or how much it costs in your country check it out below what i don't like about the app is first of all you open up the app and you have to slide left uh, or right uh, which is a little bit odd i've never heard of this other device or this other gimbal that this can be connected to um, so i'm gonna have to slide to the cine eye and then press the button and then go to monitoring settings which is a little bit annoying that reminds me or leads me to the other thing which is that the app is i love it but at the same time it drives me crazy let me explain first of all it doesn't save settings
Second of all about the app is that I don't like the Chinese that's in the app. Okay, so for example, when you go to the LUT, there's suddenly these Chinese like little texts, which just confuses you like, uh, what's this there? Why, what's it doing there? Which is a little bit odd and you know, I, I don't like it, okay? And last of all, one of the things that you've got to know, which was quite a little bit frustrating for me when I was using this is that this device can't accept 4K input. So if you've got one of those cameras that can output 4K signal through the HDMI, you're gonna have to change the settings to full HD or 1080p up to 60 frames per second. If you don't have that feature and your camera can only output 4K, for example, and you can't change that settings, this is not going to work because this can't work with the input signal of 4K, which is which is random. Why can't it accept a 4K signal and then just push it down to you know 1080p and then send that 1080p to your phone? Maybe this is gonna be too much of latency or whatever. Apart from that, I am very, very impressed what they've done and I'm definitely excited to see what they do in the future because if this is their first device, we can expect a lot more and very interesting things to come. It's very rugged design, very cool, slim design, very small and is very powerful feature that it just gives you very interestingly. Also, the price isn't that expensive. So if you're really looking for that kind of monitoring, you know, device, or for example, if you've got a director and the director's monitor and you want to just, you know, pull this little device in and get another three signals out from the director's monitor, you can easily do that, which is very, very cool. Okay, I guess that's it from me. I really like the features and the device, what it can do. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comment section below if you have any other questions or what do you think. If you're a video shooter yourself, would you consider this useful or would you think this is not useful in your case? This is all my experience, all the bad and good sides, what I've had. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Thanks guys for watching. See you next time.